In this podcast, I'm going to tell you about a medical procedure which is used for diagnostic and purposes of clinical settings and clinical settings where the patient has to be relieved of the intra-abdominal pressure or let's say intraperitoneal pressure well the peritoneum as you know is the cavity is the space in which the abdominal organs lie and sometimes in cases of portal hypertension which is hypertension associated with the arteries related to portal system. Portal system is the system which connects kidney, liver and heart. It's like a bypass. It works because of the fact that we have our digestion, right? So our digest digested material has to go to liver through veins, right? And of course it has to liver has to process the food or let's say the components the complex molecules first then it has to go to cells it cannot directly go to the heart because we don't want complex carbohydrates or long chain fatty acids to circulate all around our body without breaking without being broken down in the liver right that's the processing unit now sometimes what happens in alcoholic patients idiopathic also it can be caused by infection many viral infections hepatitis many reasons but what happens there is the serum plasma accumulation what happens if pressure increases it's a very simple thing somewhere where is large pressure what happens is a anything flows which is fluid right anything which is fluid flows from the area of large pressure to the area of yes you guessed it right lesser pressure large to small pressure right that's the normal flow unless you have work done in the opposite direction which requires additional energy but we are talking about body right now so what happens that plasma filtrate accumulates where in the peritoneum and it compresses the lungs it has this compressing devastating effect on intra-abdominal organs and they are having a hard time doing their regular job which is digestion it can also affect depending on site the retroperitoneum and retroperitoneum as no is very vital for our what excretory that is urine system also in women very important for ovaries which is reproductive system right so what do we do what do we need to do is this process called paracentesis which is aspiration of acetic fluid acet Acetes, A S C I T E S, ascites, people can call it ascites or ascites. It's the same thing as the accumulation of plasma filtrate in the peritoneal cavity, which is the cavity where all the abdominal organs lie stomach, intestine, pancreas, everything. So, there are steps of it there are basic steps right very so first what we need we need a sterilization technique because we do not want the bacteria from outside to invade the peritoneal cavity now you'll have to understand that peritoneum is what is peritoneum is free of germs it's aseptic it's very very important that we keep it that way otherwise bacterial peritonitis which is almost abrupt that means acute it develops in six hours can be life-threatening uh, it's not a laughing stock no no not a laughing matter it's a very serious thing so what are the steps 
we need to have a very high skilled person to do this because what happens sometimes is there is chances of perforation yes intestinal perforation depending on site well the paracentesis is done in either two sides one side is below the umbilicus and the other side is lateral to the rectus sheath now why lateral to the rectus sheath now if we know the rectus abdominis or the muscles of the six pack or eight pack the pack muscles six pack muscles eight, eight pack muscles they have inferior epigastric artery which is very important for the supply of all all the superficial and even parietal parietal peritoneum not visceral parietal which is exterior but still very important from the perspective of protection for the ab ab intra-abdominal contents or interperitoneal contents right so we need a 30 cc which is 30 centimeter cube needle we need gauge we need drape we need a sterilization side cleaning wide bore needle make sure sometimes what uh, the doctor attending physician does is they have a hand guided portable small ultrasound which they carry around them now what's the advantage of this it ensures that the the drain which which can be up to seven or eight liters or more that's called large volume paracentesis why large volume paracentesis because there is not one or two liter of fluid accumulated it's a long chronic process it has developed over the years and years and if it, it has to be drained very fast there is a very high probability for the patient to get protein lysis coagulation problems or shock problems which can be either renal shock hepatic shock or cardiac shock hypovolemic i mean and it has to be monitored every time now in diagnostic sense it's pretty pretty clear and pretty easy but in large volume paracentesis it gets a slight bit difficult so now people who do paracentesis are really really careful why are they careful well they make sure that after entering the peritoneal cavity right and let's say the peritoneum they ensure that there is no acidic fluid leak after the procedure is done so there are two methods to ensure this one method is called a z disk method which you will see and the other method is entrance of the white bore needle not at 90 degree but a slight elevation like 35 or 40 degrees this ensures that while retracting the wild white bore syringe what happens is the two layers will cross each other not head to head but in a slight angular position and shear